Hey guys, Sifu Adelik here, uh, Master Instructor at Kung Fu at Home, and I want to talk to you today about um, one thing that always makes me cringe when I see people demonstrate, uh, because I know that they, they might not realize what they're doing and they might not think, make, I think it makes a big difference, um, or they might even think it looks more kind of aesthetically pleasing, but the problem is, is if you, you do this incorrectly over a long period of time, it's going to end your martial career a little bit, uh, a little bit prematurely, or maybe even uh, quite a bit prematurely. I'm talking about Wu Shu Ni. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second, but this is a problem where the knees aren't in proper alignment with what the feet are doing, and although it makes for a lower stance, uh, it's not really healthy for the body, and you won't really notice it, uh, especially if, if you're training martial art, um, if you're training more kind of with wushu concepts, and you want to just make the, the, the martial art look really cool and spinny and jumpy, then it doesn't matter, you know, as long as you understand you're not going to be doing it well into your 40s, 50s, and 60s. However, if, you, if you're training Kung Fu because you like the longevity of it, and you want to be doing it, you want to fulfill that, that stereotype of the old Kung Fu master who's 80, 90 plus years old, and he's still in fantastic shape, then this is something you really want to be aware of. Okay, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. This makes me cringe because it's usually um, it's usually done by someone who who means well and they have fantastic uh, they have great talent and great potential in martial art, but they haven't had a really good foundation in, in traditional kung fu and uh, you know with, with help from a qualified uh, qualified uh, master level instructor, right? Someone who who knows little details. Um, and they're not just focused on kind of the kind of the big show, but uh, like I said, the little hinges that swing big doors, right? So in a cat stance, usually it looks something like this, right? When you've got your oops, sorry, little sixty, you've got your weight on your back foot, and you've got little weight on on the lead foot, right? And the idea behind this stance is um, you're you're kind of like you're coiled up like a spring, but the lead foot can kick really quickly if it if it needs to. It's not committed. To throw, uh, if, if you're, you know, you have your weight forward like this, and you want to throw a kick off the lead leg, it takes you time to sink back and throw the kick. Well, the cat stance is already is already primed for that, right? So when you've got, you know, weight and lead foot, you can kick very fast without having to shift your weight. That's one of the reasons for this stance. Um, in, in Mantis, when you have double hooking, it's also used for uh, for sinking in a different lock if you're grabbing someone's arm. But anyway, uh, aside from all that, the point is here what the back leg is doing. Okay, oftentimes, and this is the part that makes me cringe, is when I see that the feet are this way, sort of the body's pointed this way, but the foot is out like that. And this is what this is what makes me kind of uh, I feel like that's not going to be healthy very 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 long down the road because oftentimes what happens is the hips are pointed more toward but the foot's pointed to the side here what happens is the knee ends up bending on this angle here with the foot pointed out here you see that how that kind of looks funny my knee when, when actually my, my knee bends forward if the foot is not in alignment with that knee then I'm gonna have problems right here on this joint here. You see, my knee is bending this way, but my foot's pointing off that way. Even if I sink really low and it looks cool, that's great, but I'm constantly putting pressure on this knee. Okay, and that over a long period of time is gonna cause a serious injury to the knee. The knee's not gonna work properly. Uh, and, and typically what you want as a guideline is, you wanna have the knees bending in the same direction as the feet, right? So if you're, even this type of stance here is okay. We see the stance in, in different styles. Uh, typically, a lot of southern styles have the stance. This is okay because the knees bend inward and they match the angle of the foot, right? But if you have the feet straight and the knees bending inward, now it's going to cause that tension in the knee, and that's going to cause a lot of, you know, long-term problems for you. So, if you're finishing a form or you're performing, you're doing a cat stance, just watch for that. You're not doing that wushu knee where the foot is off to the side and the knee's pushing in like that. You're gonna, if you do it right now, you might even feel it, right? But if you're going through a form quickly and looking at a high performance, it might be something you ignore because, like, whatever. A lot of times I see it, people are trying to do a low stance and it looks cool, but they're not being conscious of what's happening to that knee long term. That's one of the little hinges that swings big doors that's in traditional Kung Fu that a lot of times people miss. So watch out for that in your training uh, and pay attention to what your body's trying to tell you because a lot of times your body will tell you, if, you know, this is good for you long term, but you gotta learn to listen, right? Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe here. Oh, and if you guys are looking for, uh, you know, for some quality instruction ongoing that you can do at home, there should be a link at the bottom here for our Kung Fu at Home program. Uh, there's a few different programs you guys can patch into, but now we're introducing our, um, 
inner chamber, which has a lot more uh, stuff like this that you can implement into your, your daily training. It's got drills and it's got uh, techniques and different concepts like this to make sure that you're um, you're getting a really uh, you're getting a lot of high valuable content into your training at home. So you're not just throwing your arms and legs around, but you're getting the heart of, of Chinese martial arts.